Hi everyone, my name is Ayn and I'm from the Singapore Art Museum. Welcome to Paradise Chua Chai Tech in conversation with Cheng Chia Yin, a program for Sam exhibition, Wiki Clicky Collecting Habits on an Earth filled with smartphones. We have here today Chai Tech, one of the artists featured in the Wiki Clicky exhibition. Joining him is Chia Yin. She is a curator at the National Gallery Singapore, and she is also she was also working with Chai Tech on his artwork for the Wiki Clicky exhibition. Without further ado, I shall now hand over the time to Chai Tech and Chia Yin. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us here today and thanks Ayin and the SAM team for the kind introduction. Um, I think um, just before we begin uh, the presentation, I just wanted to introduce uh, Chai Tech. Uh, he's a photographer and sculptor who's exhibited widely in Singapore, uh, ranging from places uh, like Ch Chiang Mai, Berlin and Paris. And uh, while the Wiki Clicky exhibition very much focuses on Chai Tech's practice as a photographer, uh, we thought together that uh, kind of an interesting entry point for us to understand a bit more about Chai Tech as an artist would be to really kind of go back a little bit um, to begin to understand his artistic training as a sculptor. And so the talk will consist of two broad parts. Uh, the first part will address uh, forms and objects that he's made uh, sculpturally. And the second part will look at his photographic work, uh, specifically also Paradise interspersed with the other bodies of work that he's made um, between 2001 and actually 2020 as well. So um, just to also look at uh, the, the kind of specific interests of Chai Tick. I think Chai Tick's interests and his material sensibilities are something that really cross-pollinate you know, between both his um, sculptural making and his photographic image making. And so we begin uh, the presentation really with a, a small discussion about this work uh, that's actually in Sam's collection uh, titled My Akong's Big House. Uh, Chai Tik, would you like to share more about it? Mm, this work is, um, I make um, two years after I, you know, at 96, I finished my diploma in La Salle and then I served two years of army. So this, this is the period of time when I joined Plastic Kinetic Worm. It's a, it's a group of artists that we gather together and then we do some exhibition. So basically this work, at that time, I'm quite concerned about how fast we change, how fast we move from a kampong to, to, to a HDB flat. Such changes, how it affects people, humans psychologically. And um, what, what I observe uh, from, from this work is, why I make this work is because I observed my grandfather after his whole life of working. And then he just... Uh, when he retired, he just stay every day at this three room flat, which I'm living now. And he, he don't have other hobby. He don't watch TV. He don't do anything. He just, just lie there whole day. So slowly his body deteriorate. I was thinking if we have, we have more space, like a garden, maybe he will slowly move out and do some gardening. So some, somehow this concept is quite relevant now. You can see a lot of people start to do gardening outside because this is a way we um, uh, relax because the space itself, if you don't have that kind of going out with friends and all these things, then you, you may want to do your own thing. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why I, I, I produce this work. And uh, the work itself, the texture of this uh, texture of line come yeah. from the product my father made this washing board. Actually. So it's a recycled washing board texture on the front. So it looked like the kind of levels of HDB flats that we are living in. And so they are all made of wood and then painted with uh, white paint. And uh, the, the title Mayakong Big House is, um, the big house itself I, is those paper house that you burn to the death. 
So mm. somehow my work during that period, or uh, my work are always from, from a, as a student, I'm always influenced by my fellow friend and artists. So our work are always very con- uh, social commentary based. Mm. So that is, uh, so this is one of the work uh, that, uh, one of the last two works, last two sculpture work that I do before I move into photography because 2001, I start to make a uh, focus on photography. Yeah. But I never, but I will never, but I don't see any, uh, uh, because I always visit this, 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 um, this social, this kind of issue that I'm interested in is always mm-hmm. inside me. It's just the medium that's changed. Mm-hmm. So even in photography, later you will see more. You, you when we, we when we uh, forward the slide, then you will see more of this. This uh, how how the relationship is still there between this work and my present work. Yeah. Yeah, I I think what you mentioned also about I think two things that are of interest. One is that I suppose then your father's workshop really becomes also a place that you can return to again and again, right? In terms of Mm. his familiarity and kind of in-depth interest in woodworking, uh, really as a a form, as as an industry in and of itself, right? And I think that's something that we will see uh, recur throughout the Mm -hmm. decades that you're making Mm -hmm. work. And also the other aspect I think was the sense of social commentary that really seems to inform and undergird not just your practice, but actually uh, the practice of many different artists um, who were part of this generation who grew up uh, in the 80s and 90s or had their formative art education during this period. And um, if you were educated in Singapore, for instance, then your lecturers very likely were going to be members of the artist village and um, it was a very kind of collective way of working and, mm. um, you know, artists having to work with one another in order to uh, make uh, exhibitions and to even make artworks as well. So, you know, this sense of social commentary, was, was it something that, you know, you saw as having to manifest um, not only in terms of the gesture of making, but also in terms of the gesture of looking? I think when I, when I was a student, in, uh, as, as a sculpture student, all my classmates, uh, mm-hmm. the sculpture department is very small, but most of my classmates, um, only a few of them are involved in the artist village. Mm-hmm. So I guess that is how my influence come from. Mm-hmm. And then when I was in the art school, it's also um, you are given um, to, to think of idea that you want or the issue that you want to deal with. Mm-hmm. So very naturally, I come into this because um, I come to, to resolve certain issue I have with the system that uh, the education system that I, I come from. Mm-hmm. So, so then, the, um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. So, so this is something that, um, and also this, I don't know, it's just people around you influence you and then you keep, uh, it's just doing it. And mm-hmm. then, uh, then with, with the people, like you also, if, if you also meet people like Lee Wen's Amanda and, Dao and Vincent Liao, because back then Vincent Liao is our lecturer. Mm-hmm. So Vincent Liao is very profound in, uh, in social commentary work and his work are quite, um, as a young student, you are quite attracted to this kind of energy in his painting. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess my influence are there, you know, I, I was influenced by them and then I was uh, influenced by uh, Milenko, so the way he paint. So a lot of time, I I'm not just doing sculpture. Last last year of my uh, diploma, I'm doing painting, and my first solo show are painting. Yeah, I guess I guess uh, it's very natural for me to go into such social commentary work because you are in that environment. 
Mm-hmm. And then I think slowly in later part, I realized that I'm not just interested in the social aspect part. I'm also interested in the, 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 the I'm interested in photography. What is photography used in uh, art making? And I was also interested in the relationship between, uh, yeah, it's mostly photography and sculpture, these two mm-hmm. relationships, because these are the two work that are very close to me. But Lee, I think I come from a family that use hand to make things. So it's very naturally when I'm young, I start to make a lot of using hand. Mm-hmm. So making is something natural for me. Photography yeah. is something that I focus on because I, I, I have the equipment and I have spent the money. So mm-hmm. I tell myself that I should not waste this medium. So in 2001, when I go into uh, um, BA in La Salle, I start to focus on photography. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 um, it's not an easy journey because photography back, uh, back then you have not many people, not many example because there's no internet and uh, none of your lecturer are using photography as a medium. Mm -hmm. Uh, Besides performance artists, they document their work. But back then, they don't sell their documentation as art. They just document, you know, just need to document Mm. and just need to keep as a record. So, so this, yeah. Mm-hmm. So in the sense, the the understanding of photography was much more inclined towards its utilitarian purposes. Yes. You know, and, than... and, and yes, and I feel that the medium itself is quite difficult to use because it's so direct. Mm-hmm. You know, how do I use it? Why do I? Why when I take the pictures, that is already an artwork. You know, it's so much so shortcut. Mm-hmm. Then you make a sculpture. The, the process is so long. Yeah. So how can that be? So, so very. So what I do is I start to take things that interest me. So mm-hmm. very naturally, as a sculpture student, I'm very interested in very sculptural structure, mm-hmm. and uh, and very sculptural structure. And then uh, so I'm interested in this uh, this form between. Also, this very fragile form that uh, make back do mm. that left over because I I I interested in because I because of the art training sometimes you see certain thing that make by lay people is mm-hmm. quite interesting, but it's only that they are not an artwork, yeah. right? Yeah, but there are some things inside that I see. So how do I bring them in as mm-hmm. artists to use them? So yeah. at the same time, I feel not right for me just to re-erect the whole situation. Mm-hmm. And I also feel it's not right for me just to take the idea and belong to me. Mm-hmm. So the only way that I do is I shift my position from a, from a photographer, uh-huh. from a sculptor to a photographer. I mean, someone who make things to someone who observe things. Yeah. 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 So-, so this is like, you know, some things that shift so I don't make anymore. I just observe and I collect by using a camera. Yeah. So, so you can, yeah. The, there's kind of this um, interesting contrast, I think, between, uh, you know, this first sculptural work or one of your last and subsequently there's a gap of almost two decades. And when you return to sculptural making, you know, it's exactly like what you said, um, where you have also then encountered certain limitations of the photographic medium where, as you mentioned, it's very instantaneous and uh, it, its uh, proximity, you know, closeness to reality is, is, is very apparent, right? So when you return to making um, more sculptural work uh, uh, in, in uh, a more kind of participative way in 2018, you know, what, what is it that um, you feel has changed in your position over the two decades where perhaps you were mm. primarily interested in photography, but, you know, what, what was, you know, your return to kind of creating forms and objects, you know, what mm. was its appeal? Yeah. I think it's uh, when I was, because when I returned from Berlin, I'm making this series of work called Nothing Black and White. 
So mm-hmm. it's normally with a compact camera and then snapshot on the street every day when I walk past mm-hmm. something that interests me. So it's almost like a diary or a sketchbook that you just collect things. Mm-hmm. So in this process of collecting two material that interests me, one is the wire on the road. Mm-hmm. Which later I, pr- I collect them and I produce a, a, a work called memory. The yeah. other one is this concrete that I found lying around in our road. Mm-hmm. And I, always, I keep being uh, attracted to them. I do not know why. And mm-hmm. this is also the way I work. I let the object uh, connect with me. And then if I keep looking at it, I will just start to uh, investigate what is going on. And then I work with the material and see. So the one thing is I, I saw this shape of this rock, this mm-hmm. not concrete that, that from a bo- broken building or from the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And I find that they are so... They have certain kind of beauty, almost like a kind of mountains and ships. And I feel that if I want to do use photography to shoot them, mm-hmm. to, as what I normally do, they mean bring them or lift, lift, put them on a gray background and then take the pictures. I feel that I can, I don't, I still cannot um, execute the idea of what I see in the form, the ships. So, mm-hmm. so this because photography has limits, it's just copy the objects and yeah. I can't really highlight the form so well, you know. I see. So, I, see. I realized that, um, I of course, and I also realized, uh, so I borrowed the idea from Scholar Rock, the Chinese way of presenting the yeah, rock. We'll see images of that later. Yeah, yeah, because the Scholar Rock itself. Because what you do is concrete and the rock, the base itself is come, you use a wood that you carve out to, to fit the wood, mm-hmm. to highlight the form. So the, the, the wood become the extent of the form. It become a mm-hmm. platform to highlight this, this yeah. concrete. So, I, so that is also when, why I start to carve. Mm-hmm. The, uh, again, this making, making is something that I enjoy I do it because making things is very meditative. Mm-hmm. To me, photography is not so meditative because it, it is not, you can't go into photography. You mm-hmm. always must be alert. So this making is, you can go into the process of make, uh, the process of this meditative. So that I start to collect concrete that um, mm-hmm. can put in my backpack and then, you know, so that, that is how I come back. For this series of works that we are seeing on the screen, that is, um, that is when I did a two, two-man show in Jindela. Mm-hmm. And that is also an idea I'm trying to develop because I have the habit to cycle along Tungo area also. Mm-hmm. And um, again, I'm interested in a lot of leftover materials. So these are one of the beach area. The first photo is one of the beach area yeah. Um, very near to the charcoal pot, the old so is is where the dumping ground is. Mm-hmm. So so I find it's a very nice area because there are a lot of this granite left there and a lot of uh, rubbish is washed up the beach. So there are a lot of material that I use. The idea I have in that time is to use that open space as my studio. I go yeah. there every day and just make a sculpture out of this. Mm-hmm. But to, but after but after like two weeks three weeks I I saw a notice put out by the police that this this land is like you know you can't you can it, it become a restricted yeah, yeah you yeah. can't access it's quite sad because there's are people who go fishing mm-hmm. so you have relationship with the idea of paradise where people just go to somewhere that is. Um, you know, kind of disconnected. Disconnected, and then you fish and just be alone. Sometimes you set set out some campfire there, and then I don't know some workers to catch mm-hmm. oyster and barbecue there. So yeah. it's the kind of things that I feel that we are losing in Singapore due to our very organized system. So like you can see that the spoon next to it is also the material I pick up from the beach. And then I try to slot. I'm interested in, because when, when you look at 
when I look at paradise, I'm, I, I, the, it's not so, so it's, oh, recently I realized that maybe recently 2018, I realized that I'm interested in this idea of very sp spontaneous mm -hmm. uh, making, you know, like you leave things, you, yeah. you intersect things. So, so I start to make all mm -hmm. these objects that I found or in the beach. Uh, the reason is I, because when I show in Explanade, I have five images of paradise. And these yeah. five images of paradise, when I put them together, it highlighted the structure itself, how it is formed. And this fragile of uh, material that, uh, how fragile is constructed, how impermanent is construction. Mm -hmm. constructed but it has yeah. certain kind of beauty and poetic of making things so, so i'm yeah. trying to borrow this idea of very spontaneous things you know? yes so so the sculpture is in the exhibition is responding to the photograph that yeah. the five photograph that's showing in the space so this this is something that i it's, it's just an idea still in my mind because I don't want to start. I mean, I execute and I produce a few sculpture, but this idea is still not fully, how to say, uh, executed. Kind of fully resolved. Yes, yeah. Because, yeah. It's, because I don't want to uh, start the habit of collecting again. Yeah. Okay. Then you yeah. have full, full all this so-called rubbish yeah. in my space because now yeah. what I like is to enjoy that, that, that my I space know. itself yes not not to have all this object so I guess when maybe there's a right time then I will start making making mm -hmm. them so when you see 2000 I think 2009 2000 then you mm -hmm. see under the Bodhi tree is also start to uh, do instead of making I restage all these leftover mm -hmm. effect. I collect them, then I restage. I feel that um, I'm more comfortable to use them now than okay. when I was a, a student or mm -hmm. when I just stopped. because I feel that I have built out a kind a, of like a database. Yes, a con database. Uh, because I. If I straight away go into using rubbish, it is very, I feel that there is, uh, it's, 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 I feel that I don't have the confidence. Okay. I don't so have the actually confidence. in a sense, even though the but, materials are supposedly scrap materials, there's still a kind of a very careful process of selection. And um, yeah. sometimes it's also an intuitive selection. Uh, a form of like relaxed control when it comes to composing them. Yes, I, I it's, it's, yes, it's all still about composing, mm -hmm. but it is also again is is what I want to say is also, uh, is is this is the is the you become more confident in what you do you because you build out this you you have been making different type of work then you know that it's related to this work mm -hmm. so when people look at this, uh, this. Uh, this so-called rubbish on the road. Yeah. Uh, they, they, at least you have, they saw some other of your work, they can relate to what this piece of work is about. Mm. So, so but, but I still get people who are a little bit, bit confused about this piece of work because, it's, yeah. because this it's, work itself it, it, is, is in the past, I'm showing the audience, look, this is what it is. Right mm. now, I with set out. Yes, yeah. now I set out in the space in a gallery space with a gray background. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm encouraged people to discover this subtleness of uh, forms, yeah. form, material in the yeah. space. In so the it's a very different kind of looking, right? Yeah, instead of showing them, pointing them, them now, towards yeah, something. Now I say, oh, hey, look, this is what it is. Mm. So to, to me, this is, um, this yeah. is uh, I think I shift my perspective. To, yes, to, yeah. to, to and, and it it actually also shows in other kind of recent works as well, uh, including this uh, book project that we did together, 
uh, and also with Celine. Yeah. And, um, you know, the brief to you, uh, one among eight artists, was to uh, create an artist book. And I think um, very early in the kind of production or development of the idea, you had resolved to uh, refer to these, you know, slices and decks of wood as artist books. And I think, um, you know, you could elaborate also a little bit more on, you know, where you were in, in 2019 in terms of considering, you know, the, the kind of raw uh, motifs of wood as a form of image making as well, you know. And um, I wanted to ask, you know, what made you choose to respond to the brief in such a way? I guess, I guess I, when I, um, I guess I'm trying to, I, 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 I'm not so sure because I don't, I, I find this project that um, I'm working with you and Celine is something that uh, I can be playful. Mm -hmm. I can try something new. Mm -hmm. So, so, so at this period of time, 2009, I was always in the workshop helping my father. So cutting wood is quite naturally for, for me. Mm -hmm. Because at that period of time, I also produced some kind of like cutting board to sell. Mm -hmm. um, um, some more like designer cutting board to sell. But a lot of time, I'm very attracted to this wood called Tambusu wood. Because yeah. it's a native wood to Singapore. And, uh, and apparently it is a very good wood to use as cutting board. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so th this, this two pieces of wood you see are local fallen trees. So there are always fallen trees that uh, bring to my father workshop, sell to my father workshop. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the fallen tree that, um, that I saw and then I see this great, this, these are very interesting uh, text, uh, things, uh, the, the great uh, patterns. And, and mm -hmm. I find that it's almost like an image. Right? Yeah. So it's almost like an exactly. image. So I just cut it in slices so it looks like a book to fold. So it's just some kind of playful. It's not a very serious idea that I think. Mm -hmm. But I realize that how much it connected to other of my work. It's nothing, yeah. it's not very serious to me. I'm just want to make something to finish the project. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it just happened that this work, uh, because wood, wood are something, uh, beside, beside uh, photography, wood making is something very close to me because it's something that is from two generations of my family. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in the, this family of carpentry. So making things is, mm -hmm. you know, so, so the material, I think wood itself is something very sentimental to me mm -hmm. with my relationship with my father. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I always will use a wood in that way, in a yeah. way. So I even so. you saw the scholar rock later, the yeah. base itself is also made of tambusu wood. Mostly they are local tree that are, are left. It's interesting how, how the concrete and relationship to the wood below, because wood are some tree are something that we cut away when we build this concrete up. Yeah. yeah. So I, this is this is a project that I done uh, when I start first move out of photography and start to uh, make sculpture. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually the earliest point. Um, yes, when I start to shift, I decided there's always, I must have reason why I make something, mm -hmm. right? So, so I give myself, I know this is a good uh, uh, project and, uh, and I think I should move out from photography. Mm -hmm. I can't just suddenly make something that I don't know why it's going on, but there, there is, but, but there are also chance of I'm not sure what is going on. Mm -hmm. So they are 50-50. So mm -hmm. I start to move out, knowing that in order, because I know the limit of photography to do this work, I have to make the base for it. Mm -hmm. So I start the project. And so, this was running actually kind of also concurrently with 
other photography projects as well? In this uh, yes, I think so. It's because my project is quite, uh, I contain a lot of things. So, mm-hmm. you know, and then carving this wood is not one day, two days you can carve one because sometimes you have spent time with the concrete mm-hmm. and you can, sometimes you must see how the form you want to make the form. So you are basically trying to study the concrete and then extend the base for it. Mm-hmm. So not not all the time is successful because even I'm trained as a sculptor, we don't have like a course that teaches how to carve. A lot of time you learned mm-hmm. because like, you know you carve it from learning. So yeah. there is no proper carving training for me. It's just uh, you just buy the tool and then you try and then you understand that you know certain direction the wood don't you have to follow the wood grade if certain. Yeah, certain angle you cannot carve so smooth. You know, you have to change. So these are things that uh, it takes for set. Yeah. So the the kind of learning actually is embedded in the in the doing and in yeah. the process. Of I think it. at the same time, I'm also working on a book project. Yeah. Oh, uh, beyond wilderness. Yes. So it's also about forest well, wilderness. In it's like beside this. this this wilderness is uh, wilderness is supposed to go it's, it's supposed mm-hmm. to be unorganized it's, it's not beautiful mm-hmm. compared to a garden that is more organized and you know yeah plant so these are a lot of time we remove all these things and then we replant new things so i feel that because at that period of time i went to the forest quite often i do a lot of walk and mm-hmm. then this texture of twigs and branches attract me and then so I mm-hmm. I thought maybe I should do something again that is also the period that I'm also carrying a camera yeah shooting uh, nothing so yes this, nothing is a pull is it's like uh it's like the phone now with a camera function you you take a lot of things so you're recording after you're yeah. recording after a certain period of time you will realize there are certain things that you are always paying attention to paying attention to so maybe there is some potential uh, that you can work on, yeah. Yeah, I think I think in terms of this series, it also suggests that you know, yeah, you know, even looking at say the image that is, you know, especially the second and third image, there's also this interest in the precariousness of these forms. Um, their center of ga- gravity is not always consistent, and the wood is actually made to support that. Uh, but to still kind of preserve its overall proportion and form. So, yeah, it's it's actually fascinating to say that, um, you know, you were making these uh, extremely delicate carvings uh, for these uh, discarded pieces of concrete, which you had, I think you've mentioned before, or we've talked about this before, that they you pick them up along the side of the road, you know, was this, was this kind of route uh, intentional or also no that is quite natural sometimes when I the first rock is is mm-hmm. at Ubi area where I cross the road okay so I pick out the rock and put inside my bag I don't, this, <laughs> this shape is so nice so, <laughs> so sometimes I really pick out I pick out one very big one from uh, I think it's Marina Barrage or something mm-hmm. I carry all the way back but I never use it so okay. there are a lot of these things. Sometimes you carry them back, you may not use them. Mm. So sometimes you, yeah. So. But it's a process of collecting and. Kind yeah, of collecting, things. spending time, and then. Yeah. Wh- whether it works or not. So a lot of times it's a lot of unsure mm-hmm. what, is, what is going on, whether this happen or not. And the process is too long sometimes, you know. Yeah. You also get tired. <laughs> Yeah, and, and speaking of finding things and not seeing them until maybe the opportunity presents itself, um, there's this uh, fantastic series that was presented as part of an exhibition, uh, Progressive Disintegrations. Um, but uh, in this case, actually, uh, it's not a sculpture. It's uh, a set of photographs. And you had, select, you had chosen to mount them uh, in a very intentional way uh, using this kind of wood uh, backing, is that correct? Yeah, 
I, I guess some people see it as a sculpture because because of the way we curate the show is left is leave out be one one piece is suspend in between the the gap of mm -hmm. between these two things and uh, itself it suggests it is a sculpture also and it's also um, the, the whole idea came from because I, I, I helped my father in the morning in the workshop. So mm -hmm. these are planks that um, planks that we uh, import for uh, wood block carving for school. Mm -hmm. But then these become wet in the transport and they grow fungus. Mm -hmm. So um, I was asked to air this piece of work. Mm -hmm. As, so, so you don't just... Uh, so you are airing it, but at the same time, you are looking at things. You are conscious the potential beauty of such stains. They look yeah. like landscape to me in painting. Mm -hmm. But I just do casually take some shots and then just pack them. You know, I have idea to, but these are living organism. You, you can't keep too long. And then they may have, I don't know what insect crawling inside. Okay. <laughs> So, so you have yeah. to fall back on photography so, almost. So I have to, I have to ex, I kept it for a while, but then because mm -hmm. there is, sometimes you get lazy, I think that, you know, to execute, but because it's just nice that there is a project coming in with fellow artists. Yeah. So I guess this is a very good, I, good chance for me to execute the work. So a lot of time, my subject is not, not so much of me saying that this is what I want and what I don't want. It's a, a lot of time it's by chance of meeting. Mm -hmm. See, I have the chance in working in the workshop, the chance of meeting this mm -hmm. kind of, and then I, because then, then I take a pictures of them. So the whole idea, uh, the whole idea is, is also I'm interested in photography that, uh, I'm interested in painting also, right? So, mm -hmm. so how do I make painting out of photograph? So, mm -hmm. so, so I see them as some ink painting, Chinese painting. So photography itself, nowadays, because it's inject print, there are a lot of choice of paper. There are, in the past, they're only glossy matte and then glossy, glossy semi-matte and then maybe matte is very rare unless in black and white. Mm -hmm. So, so we inject, there are so many texture of paper. So mm -hmm. when you print on texture paper, sometimes you lost that kind of look of photograph, you remove. So in this, in this situation, I, I know that I want to remove this photo look. Because um, in, uh, in the past, I make a piece of work called April 2001, the pink color work. It's yeah. also removing this photography look mm -hmm. and it looked almost like a print. So when I first produced that work, I really don't know what I'm doing. But 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 now I know that I'm always I'm interested in this this between an uh, image, between a print and a photo, for mm -hmm. a painting and a photo kind of relationship. Yeah. So and yeah, yeah, I think I think if if I if I may interject then, you know, when it comes to the Paradise series. Mm. Um, you can already see, you know, that this this act of chance looking, of selection, of um, not necessarily imposing uh, or making in a very concrete sense, but rather uh, being more invested in the, the gesture of finding uh, and observing, you know, mm. is something that becomes very apparent. And it's not necessarily clear from the screen, but, um, you know, what you mentioned about the links between the printed image, uh, the photograph and the object, um, you know, I understand, of course, from working with you that a lot of your prints are made with very close collaboration with uh, Chris Yap from Light Editions as well. And that process of conversation and almost collaboration then is uh, you know, it, it, it kind of generates the image uh, to a point where um, the images themselves have been described as well uh, by visitors to the WikiClicky exhibition as, as painterly, right? So, um, yeah, why, why don't you also share more a little bit about um, Paradise as a series of works? And I think one thing that it has in common with 
the Scholar Rock series, for instance, is that aspect of time. You know, Paradise was made uh, between 20, 2006 and 2014. And Scholar Rock was also made between 2013 and 2018. I guess I can't bring the shelter home <laughs> by my back. If not, okay. then, then it will be, you know. So the only way is to use camera. I guess in in 2006, I try. I went back to Pungo again. Pungo is a place that I hang out when I was a teenager with friend. When we go fishing, mm -hmm. and then we will, you know, move around that area. And my father' workshop used to be in that area also. Mm -hmm. um, so, because Pungo used to be a very developed, uh, like pig farm. There are fishing ports. There, are, there are nursery. You know, there are a lot of people living there. So at the end itself is also seafood and then there are speedboat, mm -hmm. you know, you can rent the boat out for other yeah. people. So that is, it's, it's not so, uh, it's very developed area. So when all these things move out, the yeah. place is left for a while and then land are reclaimed. Yeah. You see this area in the photo, this is already a reclaimed area very near to Pungo End. So mm -hmm. it's reclaim again, reclaim a push up and later on it push out more, the land is push out more and now HDB flat are next to it. Yeah. So this is, when I go back the, that time, the land is already uh, extended. So it's, it's, things change. So it's very hard for me to remember where are the track that we go, you know, track 24 mm -hmm. is just opposite Coney Island. I think track 17 is where all the private houses is so 24 last in the past so 24 is where where the closest area between Coney Island and Pungo you can swim over when the tide is low mm -hmm. uh, so so that so I start to do hike around that area because I need to reorientate myself because I'm curious where are these places used mm -hmm. to be where I spend time with my friend so yeah. when I was walking, I saw a lot of this, not a lot, but there are some structure that attract, there are this structure that built by, uh, by people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess most of them are people who go fishing at that time, at that area or workers. Yeah. Uh, even, the, um, even the cleaner. Mm -hmm. so, so I, so, so, at the same time, I think I saw a book called Zero Yen House yeah. by a Japanese architect student, I think. Mm -hmm. So the study of all this uh, makeshift structure in homeless people in Japan, how they, in the park, they will put out all this blue canvas thing. And then when the park officer came, they will tear it down. Mm -hmm. so, it's, they are dead. so there are certain kind of design that they designed to tear it down fast and keep when people when they are the official came so the so 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 the idea of the book give the book give me the idea that i can take pictures collect all these images so it take a while because at the same time there are also construction workers structure which i took in the beginning but i remove it after certain after a, a, a a meeting with a curator in Berlin because back then when I show this work, they are, and I told that these are not homeless, but these are people who went fishing and then, you know, and, um, and then she's interested in the project they have is about the other side, uh, mm -hmm. other possible world. So it's about idea from the people, not the main system. So, so I guess, that also gave me an idea to sharpen my work that mm -hmm. what I want to talk about is also the people, not the official, like construction workers, sometimes they are, they are, they are allowed to do that space. So, I see. You so you're do, looking at unpermitted structures. Yeah, it's just made by people, but there are still per, but structure by the, by the worker, you know. Mm -hmm. and, this, and then this, this structure are always tear down very fast. Mm -hmm. I thought so by 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 the official or by by the rain or what because yeah. So this is uh yeah. so I went a lot of time I carry a camera and mm -hmm. a tripod and I walk for quite a long to find them along the coastal area. So and, it's 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 a, and how how 
I suppose it's interesting in the sense that they became kind of landmarks for you, that you weren't interested in the broader landscape, but you were interested in, you know, traces of these very makeshift uh, forms, you know, that almost are like a little bit like outposts, you know, that are uh, dotted along the coast. But yeah. I think yeah. one interesting thing, you know, that we've discussed also in relation to this image in particular, actually, is uh, the fact that the, you know, the ice lemon tea can that you see in blue, um, you had left there, right? No, no, it's left by the person, but I just twisted it so that uh, the logo is not there. Yeah, so, um, so in a way, it's, it's quite interesting because I, I feel that for this Paradise series, it's a little bit as if um, you're using a very... Um, Kind of almost a formal technique of photography to take pictures of these very informal structures you know that these these objects are very uh, um, casually made you know they're made not to last uh, anything longer than a weekend or even actually just a few mm. hours and I think this tension between you know the formal and informal um, and you know the casual but also very rigorous uh, is something that um, it's uh, uh, that you have arrived at, I think, um, only after having worked in photography and sculpture simultaneously. You know? It's interesting that I, I have a comment by, mm -hmm. by Ho Ziyan. They say these are portrait. It's, they are not landscape. Okay. It's true. They are like portrait of, I'm taking a portrait instead of landscape. Yeah. So, but then we'll put together, you can see almost like a landscape. Yes. Uh, but these are not really a landscape. It's a portrait but of a structure. I think so. I think it's, it's really um, capturing the, the traces of the maker, you know, mm -hmm. what they needed that day to protect themselves from the environment. It's very much the, the landscape forms the backdrop. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's very much about these structures as I would say as a form of uh, casually made sculpture. Yeah. yeah, because back then I still shoot, I still shoot film. So there are a lot of chance that if it's I don't get it, get it that time, then I have to go back again, or I have, or the structure is disappear. You don't look the same anymore. Yeah, so a lot of time you have to shoot a lot of a few, a few one two row just to be sure that something's, uh, something is right. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes so yeah. It's a very interesting kind of confluence of, you know, a very precise approach to something that uh, was made in um, uh, a very kind of um, make-do manner, you know. I guess, yeah. I guess I also enjoy the, the alone of being in that space. Mm -hmm. I go in week, week, weekdays, yeah. like many people. So I, I'm almost the only person walking along the coastal area. Because uh, back then, the park connector is not built. Everything is not built. Mm -hmm. But there are, the land is already reclaimed. So you can walk. You don't know where you're going, but you walk. Uh, it's no shelter, yeah. nothing. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then you, will, a... you are trying to see there is a chance to meet this kind of structure built by people. I focus only in Pungo because at first, I try to focus the whole idea of structure itself. But mm -hmm. I feel it's too broad, broad for me. Okay. And I think there's no meaning for me to go other places because the place itself means a lot to me, Pungo. Okay. Because I spend most of my time, teenage time at that area. So it's good that it connects to me. So I visit them every time when I do this project. I stopped this project in 2004 because the the the. 2014. 14, yeah. yeah. Everything is almost developed oh. already. So you have all this sign coming up that is no camping, no fishing, mm -hmm. where you can fish, where you cannot fish. And this recently yeah. become the, 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 the freedom of, of where you want to fish become narrower. Mm -hmm. And the freedom of being in the space also become restricted. Yeah. So, so I guess... And also the shelter is getting less and less. And I think that is the time I stopped because I also don't know when I should stop because on and off, I still see some mm -hmm. shelter. 
but then you but you but you understand this style of photography that you you have to keep on doing because then the composition can be consistent mm -hmm. if you take a break the composition will lost because of the yeah mm. yeah so I, I think i should stop at that, at that point yeah and that, that i think you you have mentioned before that they just became less and less available as well mm. and also um the fact that you know these structures uh were built on land that hadn't been designated yet. You know, it's, mm. it's newly reclaimed, but it hasn't been tamed into a, a park or a waterfront yet. I, I so I think, um, yeah, that's where paradise stands in the sense that it's uh, quite fleeting as well. But uh, by using photography, you are able to then index and almost kind of classify uh, each of these structures. And interestingly, this, this format of using photography as a unit of information um, is something that we also see in an older and earlier body of work uh, titled Wonderland. Um, I've just uh, included one image out of the 500 um, that you took over a two-year span, um, and they were presented quite differently. They were presented in a much um, smaller format as well, like this. Mm. And, you know, you know, what was it when you were taking these photographs? Um, you know, what was the kind of uh, sensation that you wanted to create uh, with these works and by displaying them in, in such a format? Um, because, uh, you see, as, 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 a, as an art student, uh, someone who are interested in sculpture, mm -hmm. I have the habit to collect things. Mm -hmm. So I have the habit to visit Sungai Road back then. I have yep. the habit to go Salvation Army. I mm -hmm. find that this style of shopping is very exciting. I don't know <laughs> what I'm looking at, but I know that there are something that is interests me. So it's almost like a library that mm. you go and look for. So it's so, actually a sculptural library. Yeah, Sungai Road is one of the, the, mm. the place that, so this work can be about Sungai Road, can be about, uh, about Salvation Army. Yes. Because certain certain part of the material come from Salvation Army, certain part come from uh from Sungai Road. Okay. Because, because I have the habit of and certain part come from my collection mm -hmm. that I buy from Salvation Army. So it's it's, it's interesting that all these things that uh, that I took they have no value. Mm -hmm. So that you see the, the second hand market in uh, Sungai Road is like one dollar, five dollars. So we bargain with we try to make value to this thing, mm -hmm. to the person who think they have value. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that um, I, the, the, this project, because I was given an opportunity to show in uh, this, uh, uh, Willock. this Willock, no, mm -hmm. Willock, uh, Scott Square, I think, is okay. in Orchard Road. Well. So the, the, this is a temporary exhibition place uh, mm -hmm. open by the developer so there are two curators lindy lindy is one of them that mm -hmm. invited me mm -hmm. so so back then i also influenced uh, not influenced what what um, what start this project how what start this approach is because i saw Lo, leo lanette mm -hmm. this american photographer she also did postcard size of uh, of salvation salvation army things so i thought maybe i can do this uh, approach also call mm -hmm. taking pictures of all things so by doing this process i realized that i i removed the i removed this uh, the, 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 the object, background and the, the object from where they are from and then put them in a new platform Mm -hmm. so, so that you can spend time looking at that. So the whole idea is to have 1,000 images, mm -hmm. but I only can, uh, I think I only can manage 500. Yeah. So, so there's, yeah. and then it's also that uh, I realized that um, when you put things like that, you have a feel of, uh, it, then you feel like a collection. Mm. And you can see uh, another view of this object together. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like muse museumology. Yeah. Play all a, the things out. So it's that kind is, of an encyclopedic 
tendency. So that, yeah, so this is so so yeah, I think I remember I bought a book on this museum logy at borders to do <laughs> to do research on this project. Okay. So so then so so I managed to take pictures of all this thing and then uh, I realized the ability of camera there can clean up things. Mm-hmm. They can reduce and uh, because the foot you can uh, you can reduce the size and enlarge in a proportion way. Yeah. So this way, in a way, you you make them more organized and then you are able to focus on the subject when you go so, closer. Yeah. So then by um the time that you are also embarking um on eternity, um then you know this set of skills also comes in handy, right? Where um, the, pho- the photograph acts as a kind of a unit of uh, information and representation. Um, and it, it also then maps, uh, you know, this old space where uh, you're basically photographing the shop houses um, that were vacated shortly before the post museum uh, took up residence uh, in, in this same space as well. And, you know, what I find interesting is that um, the images actually shift in register, you know, from something that uh, capture and document, but in when presented in this way, in a larger um, scale where these images are each uh, one meter by one meter, um, then they become more like textural studies or almost like portals uh, for, you know, people to then um, also look at, you know, the textures that you're capturing and you know the leftovers, which is such a kind of contrast as well uh, from the approach that you've used uh, for Wonderland. Um, and then I think we move to the other set of works uh, that was shown in the National Gallery as part of Wiki Kiki, which was nothing. And with nothing, it almost seems as if there's a kind of a, a resistance of you know photography as this kind of universal unit. And what you're doing you know, when we were looking through the works that you would be selecting for um, the exhibition was that you were very much more interested in what the camera was capturing almost uh, by accident rather than what you were, you know, making people um, focus on uh, with other, you know, as was was represented by the works in, in Wonderland and other series as well. So yeah, this, this is a, this this image is the older selections of uh, nothing which yes. are exhibited in art stage. Yeah. I, when I revisit this series of work, I, I I feel I feel that I'm forcing people to look at things. Yeah, and I feel that so when you see the new selection for nothing, it's almost blank. I don't force people to look at things. Mm-hmm. It's almost nothing for them to see. Exactly. So I guess I guess it's different state of mind that when I look into these images, revisit them, mm-hmm. but I realize that in this selection of uh, new nothings, there are a lot of them. They again, they are texture of, mm-hmm. of they are texture of when we t- we 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 texture of construction when we move when we when we move as a nation. It's it's interesting that if you look at uh, the the five major work that project that I have is like Paradise, uh, Wonderland, Beyond mm-hmm. Wilderness, uh, mm-hmm. Memory, and then uh, mm-hmm. what else? Um, and the Scholar Rock. They are all text. They are all material that left over when we progress as a nation. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, and I think. And then you, you can see that this for this this two body of work, um, the the mix mixing of these two 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 work of course is, is suggested by you and I mm-hmm. I feel that are, I'm not so sure what I can find in them but I think I that the first time when we meet we put two images together there are a lot of potential that I see in them mm-hmm. so they give. Instead of uh, presenting only paradise, I feel that it become too. It give a different mood, very serious and heavy mood. Yeah. So I guess at this period of time, I prefer to be more light and more, more, more not so serious. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I, so so I think 
I created a rhythm that is more more relaxed and you know where you display your the tree. Even those small images are create not just to look at the image, but create to highlight the movement of the placement. Yeah. Um, again, um, you can see also that uh, nothing is, is, even there are two different projects, but they are always connected because this looking is always from me. The me mm -hmm. is the one that uh, are always very consistent. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so these are like, mm, so the, the, the texture, this black and white texture suggests, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's responding very well with the structure of uh, mm -hmm. uh, this makeshift structure in Pongo. Yeah. I guess, yeah. I and guess also, from, yeah. yeah. I think you also made some very um, pointed decisions to uh, complete the framing treatment a certain way. Um, especially for nothing, you know, where you didn't want them to be treated as uh, framed photographs, but that uh, the, the edges of the image were actually completed uh, or mounted on a wood panel as well. I guess, yeah. I guess yeah. I want to expose the mm -hmm. side of the, the, because normally we have a strip of wood to make it perfect and clean. So mm -hmm. I guess I like this uh, raw, in fact, for this work. I think it fit the concept of this work. They are very makeshift, they are raw. Mm -hmm. So it's like you expose this construction yeah. material. Oh, it is. Where else the, the color work, the paradise, they are more formal. So it, you, you, you know it, so you, yeah. So you yeah. frame it out properly. So it contrasts between both work. Yeah. So it's a lot of time it's about rhythm balancing. Yeah. yeah. And here, yeah, I, I feel as if, you know, the first part of works where we were talking about your sculptural sensibilities and the way that you laid out these images, you know, first in Photoshop and then later um, on the wall really suggest, I think, um, the fact that uh, these sensibilities are combined now, you know, between photography and sculpture um, and materiality really being that main kind of driving uh, mm. force and interest you know, uh, moving mm -hmm. forwards as well. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks so much, Taitik, um, for yeah. sharing. Um, we've really meandered through uh, about two, almost two decades plus of your work. And um, with that, um, I'll ask Ayin to uh, bring up the screen and see if we have any questions from the audience. Okay, we have a question from Intan um, who says she's curious or she or he is curious about why the WikiClicky exhibition combines two of Chaitik's works and can he talk about its unique arrangement? I guess I, I, guess I the, the, the mixing of two works, of course, is suggested by you. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I feel, and I think, I like to, I, 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 so I feel that hey, maybe there is certain potential. So I like to discover that things maybe I miss. So, mm -hmm. so I guess I, I, so which means I shift my position a bit to, to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to discover your suggestion. Is there something new that I never mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. So I think I do see, I do also, to see certain uh, relationship between these two work, which I never see before, the the, the texture that I always interested, always yeah. coming out in my camera. Yeah. The other way is when I arranged this work, I was in my um, the whole wall of National Gallery as a canvas. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So so. Again, my training is not just sculpture, also painting. So again, this kind of, and I, I'm aware that my rhythm of, I'm aware that I do not want very uh, systematically mm -hmm. organized, at, uh, arrange them in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to have only, and I realized, I, how to say, I was seeing them as a kind of sound rhythm, mm -hmm. big 
the size of uh, the size itself. So I see them as a rhythm, big, small, small, big, mm -hmm. you know, this, and then the rhythm of up and down. So I'm using musical kind of rhythm or movement that I want to see. Mm -hmm. So, so I know that my rhythm is one and two because mm -hmm. at first I do not have these small images. So I have one and two, one and two. I feel quite still very mono. So I yeah. feel that the small really push it to another, mm. it's like another tone that make everything together. So, so that's why the small images is coming out yeah. because they are there to like break this very, the, the tone kind of, of one, one and two, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, two. Yes, they are breaking the one, two, one, two rhythm. So mm. visually I'm not just, I don't know, maybe now I, I listen more to sound. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess I, when I look at them, I also start to relate to sound. When I make this thing, it has to do with rhythm. It's okay. not just, yeah, I see that rhythm. So, so it's not so much about my concept and then that it, that's it. It's about mm -hmm. the rhythm. So this rhythm comes from your understanding of the, you know, your understanding of um, space and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, it's, it comes from your art practice. This um, yeah, yeah. I think you have also presented uh, paradise a few times before in different contexts and also different sizes, um, including uh, the larger size at Jandela, but also previously um, a smaller, you know, thirty by thirty cm size. So in a way, I think the way that you've chosen to combine them and also permutate them you know, suggest um, a different kind of speciality uh, across all these works as well. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, thanks so much, Chai Tik. Um, mm. And uh, over to you, Ayin. Thank you very much, uh, Chai Tik and Chia Yin, for the very insightful sharing. I think I speak for all of us when I say that we truly enjoyed hearing the ideas and the stories behind the different artworks. So thank you again. Um, thank you all for joining us in Paradise Chua Chai Tik in conversation with Cheng Chia Yin. We hope all of you had a wonderful time. The exhibition Wiki Clicky Collecting Habits on an Earth Filled with Smartphones is now open and is showing at the National Gallery Singapore. We do have other programs for the Wiki Clicky exhibition, such as artist talks and workshops by the different artist curator pairings. So do sign up for them if you are interested. Please um, visit the SAM website for more details of the exhibition and programs. Thank you.